Hey folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com. Today I've got Wahoo's newest bike computer, the Wahoo Element Bolt. Uh, now this is their second generation bike computer on the Element series. The first one was announced about a year ago or released about a year ago, uh, and that was the original Wahoo Element. And you remember that one because it's definitely a bit bigger. It's a bit chunkier. Uh, that was sort of like the main complaint for a lot of people. So it just didn't look all that awesome. Um, and when it first came out, it had a lot of teething pains. Like there was a lot of little things that just took time to fix. And now keep in mind, that wasn't even Wahoo's first bike computer. That was actually the Wahoo Reflect and the Reflect Plus uh, a number of years earlier. Still, when it came out a year ago, there was a lot of little quirks, uh, little things that just weren't quite right, and there were some features missing as well. A number of things that you know people said if you compared an element to a Garmin, it was hard to choose the element. Uh, and now we fast forward a year later, and it's an entirely different picture. Uh, for one, the element has had so many software updates, it's mind-boggling. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Everything from turn-by-turn -turn directions to Strava integration to uh, bike, best bike split integration. There's lots and lots of big changes, and there's lots and lots of kind of tiny ones that you might not notice at first and certainly wouldn't be on like a spec sheet, um, but they're there and they're, they made a big deal if you tried out the element a year ago. Of course, probably the biggest and most important thing is the fact that it's not big at all. It's tiny now. Uh, so it's got GPS packed inside of it. It's got AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart for connecting to all your sensors. So like on this bike right here, I have the PowerTap P1s. It can connect on that via AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart. I'm wearing an AMP Plus heart rate strap. You can use a Bluetooth Smart heart rate strap, speed cadence sensors, uh, trainers. It'll connect to the Wahoo Trainer Series right now, and then sometime later this year, it'll connect to any AMP Plus FEC trainer. Um, so it's got all the same features as the Element, and in fact, it has the exact same features as the Element. It's the same software. The only difference between them is the fact that uh, this only supports nine, only, nine uh, data fields at once on one screen, and the full Element supports 11. Uh, but you can have multiple screens, and you can iterate through them, so that's really not so much of an issue. Um, now, this is more of an overview video. I've got a full unboxing and size comparison video. You can check that up there. Uh, and that goes into all the details around how big the unit is compared to all the different units out on the market. Um, it also talks to what's in the box and uh, it's pretty cool. So check it out. Uh, for now, I wanna walk through the menus on this and kind of just talk about how it looks and how it works while you're on the bike. Oh, speaking of the bike, this isn't my bike. This is just a rental. I wish it was my bike, but no, it's not. So if you're wondering why I got an upgrade, no, I'm still, still downgraded, yep. Maybe. Actually, before we go into the menus, I want to point out one thing, which is the mount. Um, so you have this out front mount. You can see it right there uh, on the front of the bike. And at first you'd say, ah, oh, it's like any other out front mount out there. And that's sort of true in a way, um, except it's incredibly aerodynamic looking. You, you basically pop it in like a quarter turn mount. It's not quite compatible with the Garmin mounts. Um, I've made it work. You can basically just wiggle it and it goes into the Garmin mount. So if you have a Garmin mount, you can kind of make it work, but this is really cool. Um, and what you'll notice there is it's basically perfectly aerodynamic. Uh, and what Wahoo did is they worked with a bunch of really smart scientists and they made the most aerodynamic bike mount they could. They have put it in a wind tunnel and they're saying that it is the most aerodynamic bike um, computer mount combination on the market. Uh, and that's because of the fact that it's just perfectly all one piece once you clip it in there. The other interesting thing is on the back of it, um, the back of this bike mount there, there's a tiny screw right there, uh, and you can screw it in, which means that this becomes one piece. What's really interesting about that is that from a UCA rule standpoint for uh, pro cycling teams, when they weigh their bikes in, they have to weigh everything that can't be removed. So a water bottle, for example, gets tossed off the side and the bike gets weighed at that level. Uh, now, as most people know, the challenge with pros right now is they actually have to increase the weight on their bike uh, to meet this minimum threshold uh, that all bikes must meet. And so with a bike computer, normally you'd have it detached like this so it doesn't count towards your threshold. You weigh the bike, now you add it, and now you're adding weight. Um, but with the screw there, that actually counts from a UCI standpoint because you can screw it in, becomes one piece, and now it's part of your original bike weight when they weigh it, um, and it's not something you're adding more weight after the fact. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so here we are with the element. Now I've pulled the mount forward just so the camera angle is right with the sun and everything. Um, the way it works with the element is to start off, you've got your main data pages. Uh, now this is one page here, and you can see it's got nine metrics on it, which looks like a lot. But what's cool about this is I can go and increase and decrease the metrics on the fly at any point in time uh, using these arrows right here. So I can go down to uh, basically one, but it still takes up kind of that 
whole portion. So essentially two metrics there. Uh, I have watts and miles per hour. Um, I can go ahead and increase this just like this and add more and more lines. Uh, now I can control these lines with the app. So in the app, the Wahoo Element Companion app, that's where I will go ahead and specify uh, which order things are in. So for example, watts is most important to me, all the way down to average watts is least important. So as I go up one, um, average watts drops off at the bottom along with the other data field there of TSS. And then I can keep on doing this and more and more drop off. Um, I can create additional custom pages as well. And I can put those here right now, if I go press the page button, it's gonna to go to my climbing page. Uh, this is a dedicated page Wahoo has that's designed around climbing. Uh, so at the bottom here, you'll see the route profile. Uh, see, I'm kind of at the end of my ride. This is after I just finished up a ride that was actually really hilly. So you can see just about 3,000 feet of climbing uh, and just under uh, 3,000 feet as well of descending. Now I started and ended in the exact same place. And so the fact that these are only seven feet apart is pretty solid. That's a good bare much altimeter. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, that's, that's really nice. And again, the same thing applies here this will eventually, I can go just to watts and miles per hour and grade, uh, watts and miles per hour, um, and then watts and that profile. And, and I'll show you, as you see right now on the screen, this is what it looks like while I'm actually climbing. Uh, you can go ahead and see the entire profile. I can zoom in and out on the profile to look more clearly at the different sections. Uh, it works really well. And like before, you can change the order of what these fields are that are displayed here. Uh, so you can go ahead and choose what's more important to you. Next, we've got the route page here. Now routes on the element, come from Ride with GPS or Strava. So if I plus so if I press this route button right there, um, you can see the route that I've created. In this case, it was the uh, out to the lighthouse at uh, Capta Formentor, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that's that's all right. And if I go ahead and I can scroll down, look at all of my steps um, as it went down, and and this is actually a pretty straightforward route to get to. Uh, but yesterday we rode I don't know 80 something miles, and it was a much more complex route that I mean probably had 150, 200, I mean tons and tons of steps. Um, so to be able to have that is is really useful. There's also functions like commuting and you can end the route, which is kind of handy. Um, so I can go and end this right now, for example, because I'm done with this ride, and that'll go ahead and it'll continue my workout, but it'll end the route. And then if I do that, I can go back in a route here, and now I can go ahead and see the other routes that I have. So uh, the route from today, the route from yesterday, a bunch of other routes that I've gotten here uh, around Paris and home, uh, and other routes that I've used here and there. So you can see which ones they come from. For example, this one here, the Vegas Airport loop is on Strava. Um, the Grand Canary loop that I've made is on Ride with GPS, um, Ride with GPS, and so on. And I can open up each one of these routes if I wanted to. So I can look at the one from yesterday, I can select this, uh, and I'll go ahead and load that route up. Um, now this is a, a pretty long route, but it already basically just shows you what I'm gonna be doing next. I can click on route and I can get all the queue information right there in 721 feet. I'm gonna make this churn 1.6 miles. I'm gonna do the second churn in the roundabout. Um, now this is the only area, it can be a little bit tough to see this little two number inside the roundabout. Not the end of the world, but if that's my only criticism is that it can be a tiny bit tough to see that. Um, but there you go, routing, uh, it works pretty well. It's churn by churn. It's gonna show you the street names. That is a big change from a year ago. Uh, so if you touch the element a year ago, it is different now. Um, you won't see the street names on the map itself, which is kind of a bummer. I wish you did. Um, you can zoom in here, it's black and white, and it'll make the resolution clear. Uh, but they do have a global base map for the entire world, so you do have all the maps on there no matter where you go. Next, I'm gonna to go to Strava segments. Um, now, if I'm within a mile of a starred Strava segment, so a segment that I've starred on my account, then I will go ahead and see this listed right there, and it'll go ahead and walk me through as I approach the segment, and then as I'm on the segment, how I'm competing on it. Um, it's really cool stuff. I demoed this last August sometime, and I would say that Wahoo definitely does the best when it comes to live uh, segment racing. It's, it's really, really well done. Then we got back to my main page here. So again, kind of back to where I am at the start there uh, to be able to go ahead and uh, change all the data fields and look at those data fields. If I press this button up in the left here, it's gonna take me into the menu system. Uh, and here I'm gonna change my backlight so I can go and uh, go on or off and I can do how many seconds. And you can change all these settings in the app. And that's really the thing to keep in mind is the app is much uh, more detailed than some of the options you have here. I can go and change my location, indoor, outdoor. It's just simply turning on or off the GPS. Uh, I've got the LEDs. So up at the top here, you have LEDs that can be used for churn and zones. Uh, so as you come up on a churn, it'll beep and chirp. Uh, and it'll also show you which direction you're going, you know, to the right um, or to the left. Uh, it's cool stuff. 
Down here I've got my sensors, so I've got my heart rate strap for example, uh, my power meter there, um, I can go and see more information about that right there, uh, and the same with the power meter, it's, it's kind of fallen off right now in terms of it's been uh, sitting there. So you can see right here, this is the power tap P1s, I've got my right pedal's good, my left pedal's good from a battery standpoint, I can hit the calibrate if I want to to go ahead and calibrate that. Uh, I can then add sensors down here as well. Um, so pretty straightforward, uh, if I go down to the bottom I believe I've got the ability to system info, um, and here I can look at the free space, uh, 282 megs, which again is tons of space, like there's no need for counting uh, pixels, not even pixels, there's no need for, for comparing specs on space on this bike computer. You've got the whole global base map, um, your routes and activities take up virtually nothing uh, for a given ride. A given ride is going to be like 100k, um, so one tenth of one meg uh, for, you know, per hour. Um, so it's, it's really, really small. Uh, I can check for updates. It's going to do that via Wi-Fi and the app. Um, so this does have Wi-Fi and that's in fact how it checks for routes. Uh, so if I go back here to my routes page, for example, okay, if I click route, uh, I'm going to end this route right now since I'm not going anywhere and I'm going to go routes again and I'm going to sync and I believe within Wi-Fi. Um, so that was super quick. Uh, so it synced all those and it didn't find anything, which is, is good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through the app and all the details of it just for fun. Um, so starting off on here, this is the results page, uh, the results tab. This is where I can see my previous ride. So I can go tap a ride, for example, here. I can pull that open. Um, it's going to show me a map of my ride up top there. Uh, and this is the ride I did last week. And then the distance down there, kind of summary information. And to see my heart rate zones, my power zones, uh, into power metrics, power charts. And there's just plenty of different charts to look at. Uh, so lots and lots of stuff I can dig into here. I can go up the top there and look at some of those different options and reorder them. Um, I can also go and forward it on to different services. Um, so you can see I've already configured Drive with GPS, Strava, Training Peaks. I can then share it, for example, with today's plan by simply tapping that right there. Uh, if I tap it, Carter, there we go. Um, and that'll go ahead and export that and process it right to the site automatically. Uh, and you can do that, of course, um, automatically after a ride, but in this case, if I just wanted to manually do it, I can do it that way too. Clicking back here, uh, or back to this main page, you can see it's categorized by kind of last week, for example, uh, five rides, 11 hours, 136 miles, uh, and then just different chunks from there. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. Sorry, try not to drop the phone at the same time. Profile, this is my profile information. At the top, I can see my linked accounts. So here's where I can go and set up accounts like Strava, Training Peaks, etc. Uh, and these are different accounts that you can link to automatically send your ride information to uh, once you complete that ride. Click done up here and go down. You can see just general information about the person. This is used primarily for a calorie burn. Uh, and down here you've got my power zones followed by my heart rate zones. I can go ahead and edit zones if I wanted to right there uh, and then change each of the different levels here. And it'll simply just cascade on down to the bottom. I can also auto calculate. So for example, go back into my power zones here and I choose uh, a different wattage for my FTP. So let's just say I change that to 305, uh, click done, auto calculate. That's gonna change all these right there. Um, and I'm not quite sure why it's showing anaerobic threshold at 2000 watts, but uh, and I can change number of zones from six, seven, eight, uh, and that's pretty much it when it comes to zones. Next, we'll go into the settings. So this is where you get the most information about the unit itself. Um, so you can see if I click up here, I can change to a different element if I've got multiple elements paired. In this case, I just have one element right now paired to it. I go down into here, and that first up, I've got my battery displayed, so it's 99%. Uh, it's connected, it's up to date on firmware. I click Customize Pages, and I can go and change different pages. So the lap data page, for example, I can change each one of these by simply holding it down and prioritize it differently. So obviously, I prefer prior or power as my highest priority. I can go ahead and then say my next highest priority is, for example, distance of the lap, uh, and just uh, switch these around up to nine different data fields as I see fit. And then I've got workout data. Uh, this is kind of my core data page uh, that I have for the unit itself. And I can go ahead then and customize these and change these around. Or I can go ahead down to my, um, you see DCR data, which is one I've already customized, a brand new data page that I've added there. And I can simply create a totally new data page by just going right in here. Um, I'm just gonna type in new is the name of the data page. And then I can choose different metrics. You can see tons and tons of metrics to choose from here. I mean, there's really a lot of metrics to, to pick. Uh, I can just kind of pick them at random just for fun here just to show you some of these. So you see, as I'm doing this, it's adding numbers next to it, three, four, um, all the way up to nine. So I'm just gonna do two more. There we go, three more. Okay, click Save. And then you'll see the new data page I can reorder these different uh, metrics that I've picked just like it could be four. So this is the most important one. So if I were to decrease my data fields to just one, it would show that. 
okay? Then you'll see the climbing data page. This is the metrics that'll show while I'm climbing uh, atop the different charts for basically uh, kind of a graph showing the ascent and descent. Um, I've then got the map data fields, uh, so I can add data fields to those. Uh, speed is what's shown right now versus the workout average. Kicker control here, uh, this is automatic when the kicker is turned on and moving. And then I can change the data fields that are shown atop that. Um, those are top the control data fields. So keep in mind, uh, you still have more fields below that for controlling the kicker itself. Uh, and then segments here, um, and that's all going to the live segments options in a moment. So those are data pages. Uh, next we have sensors. Uh, so this will go and show me the sensors that are already paired. So you can see all the different sensors right here. I've got a power meter there, uh, a speed sensor, a ticker. A, this is actually a power tap P1. So I can go down, I could rename the sensor, for example, if I wanted to. Um, and you know, I've done that right here. You can see the Quark D0 um, and the Phoenix OHR, that's the optical heart rate sensor uh, that's sitting right there. Um, so that shows you that's got the signal right there with the uh, little green bars. Uh, if there's other sensors that were not uh, saved and were nearby, I could actually just save them right here uh, and do the pairing right from the unit itself, which is pretty cool. Next, we've got LEDs. Um, so these are the LEDs that are atop here. I can change them to show speed, um, power, heart rate, uh, as well as just simply turn them off. And then they'll also be used for different things like workout pause and resume, notifications, turn by turn uh, navigation, and then also the sounds down below for when you pause and resume a workout. Finally, maps uh, into the mapping section. So this will show you all the maps that are downloaded uh, from the platform, which is basically everything on Earth. If you wanted to download other maps for other areas, uh, so for example, if you went to Antarctica, you could do that right there. Um, but uh, for me, it kind of covers all the stuff I need to automatically uh, by default, which is pretty cool. We then have the auto sharing um, of the live tracking link. Now, as I talked about in the in-depth review, the live tracking is completely and totally useless. Uh, it's simply a dot that it shows as to where you are. Uh, so really, really basic. It's, it doesn't show you where you've been, um, where you're going. It doesn't show you any AMP Plus or Bluetooth smart sensor stats. Uh, super basic. What it does, though, show you is where your other people are that you um, are in your group. So for example, if I'm riding and I see other people uh, out there that are, are listed as friends, I can go ahead and uh, locate those on the map and kind of see where they're riding as part of my group, which is kind of neat. Strive Live segments here. Um, so this will go ahead and display um, these different metrics, for example, while you're doing a Strava Live segment. Uh, so automatic page change means that'll go ahead and will change to the Strava segment page as you approach the Strava segment, so you don't have to do anything else on the unit itself. Um, and then you'll also see notification on other pages as well. Uh, so these kind of are used sort of um, in tandem together. And then you'll use the LEDs in Strava mode as well to show your pacing. Then we got some general settings, for example, auto pause, I tend to leave that off, auto lap, um, backlight duration, so five seconds, uh, you can change the durations there or just simply turn it on and leave it on all the time. Wi-Fi networks, where you configure the Wi-Fi networks to go ahead and have this unit automatically upload, which is the next option there. And then for alerts down the bottom, you've got phone calls, messages, and emails. Um, it'll show you these alerts on the unit itself and you can actually read the full text of the message, uh, which is pretty handy. Do not disturb is pretty cool. If you're in the middle of a ride, you can change the do not disturb setting, uh, five, 10, 15, or 30 minutes. And what that'll do is that'll give you an option to basically uh, shut off all new notifications coming in for that time period. Uh, so it's kind of like a, uh, a go away sort of function. It's, it's pretty neat. And then auto shut down just in case you happen to leave it off. Last but not least, we'll talk about the uh, routing options, which is kind of what this ride button here is. Um, now, if you're doing if you're doing a ride, um, it'll actually show you the stats of the ride itself automatically, uh, which is kind of cool to have that on your phone uh, just as a quick check. But what's more interesting here is the routing options. Um, so this allows me to search for location nearby to route to. So I can do a one-off route without any, any creation of routes um, on itself. It's just a point-to-point -point sort of thing. So I can simply go up here. I can select a location just up the valley, for example. Let me just kind of scroll up here, right there. Um, there we go. And it's going to create the route uh, as simple as that. And I can select that, and it's then going to go and sync it to the unit. And that's, there you go, route loaded. Um, it's, it's really as simple as that. Super, super quick and easy. Um, I can also go and change that if I wanted to, and you can see it's already given me the directions right there on the left-hand side. I can change the route to something I've already established, for example. Um, so you can see these routes right here that I have in the unit. So if I were to go and click this route right there, it'll go ahead and load that up. Now it's a long, long way away, so it's probably not going to work very well. Um, but nonetheless, you can see how that works. Um, I can also go ahead and import routes as well. So let me pull this up and change route. 
And I can do this by creating a route from history. So I can use past rides and uh, use that as a basis for a route. Um, I can also sync from different services. Uh, so me, so there we go. Um, so the services I have there are Strava, Ride with GPS, Commute, and Best Bike Split. And then finally, if I open up a, oops, went too far there. Um, if I open up a GPX, uh, TCX, or let me sorry, get me back there. Finally, if I open up a GPX T6 um, or even fit file as well, um, it'll automatically go ahead and uh, show that file uh, or show that route and copy it into the Element app, uh, assuming you tell it to open up with the Element app, which is pretty cool. And then you can send it right to the Element and you're good to go. Okay, with that, thanks for watching. Definitely go ahead and hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button that we've got all the latest sports technology goodness. Uh, it's going to be a busy few weeks. That is without the question uh, the case between now and the next few weeks. Um, so lots of cool stuff on the way and you do not want to miss that. Have a good one. I'm